So let's try with the, as I mentioned you, vulnerability rating testimony is an important part which can teach you about the vulnerability rating part. And uh, I will say, if you are going for the web application testing, I will, uh, you should make a PDF of this page. It will help you a lot to understand. It contains all the vulnerabilities. See, so most of the people try to find, figure out the P1 vulnerability, but uh, this is a difficult part to understand. So you can see sensitive data exposure, insecure OS firmware, command ingestion, hard coded password, which is also your API find out, broken broken cryptography, which is your uh, simply a cryptographic part, automatic security misinformation. So, but over here we're gonna try with the command vulnerability. So last time we have done the SQL ingestion, but we are trying in the real website. Now we're gonna try the injection part, but what are the injection over here? Okay. So the injection attack, so you can see injection attack occurs when the user is able to input untrusted data during the application system to execute initial commands. Or you can see over here, they have given us definition of SQL injection. What exactly the SQL injection means over here? You can see SQL injection is a web security vulnerability that allows an attacker to interfere with the queries with an application to make it to a database. Yes, basically we are attacking on the database structure to identify the queries over there. This will help you out to understand the definition of the part Follow the OWASP top 10 standard to understand what are the vulnerabilities that an attacker or a contest follow to penetrate their or secure their websites. So we're gonna try one by one. We're gonna try the most common vulnerabilities, just like uh, I'm gonna show you. Mm, let's start with the injection part. So in injection, uh, the next injection over here is your command injection. Simple, a command ingestion is also a vulnerability that an attacker can upload a file on the server side or execute any OS command. So let me show you in this section. See, this is a proper URL segment. HTTPS webattacker.com. So what is the formula to identify the vulnerable parameters? What exactly the, uh, what, what we have to identify. So I will write uh, how to identify the web application. We can say loops or we can say holes. So I have a simple funder. I will say domain name, domain name, file type dot programming language that the most of the website used with the parameter is equal to value. So what exactly this is over here? A domain name could be a website. For example, I'm gonna take xyz.com. The file type over here is the directory of the file type or it could be a direct file over there. Or suppose the file type should be a login.php. You can consider this one as your facebook.com also. When you see this one, I'm going to do facebook.com. Let's do the login part. See this one. We have the domain name and we have the file also. For example, if I write my name over here, part four at the rate co.in, password, one, two, three, four, five. See this one. Now you can see this login device base, regular login. Now you can see the question mark. The question mark identifier, simple over here. 
this is your all the file types and directories. These all are your file types and directories. But after the question mark, there is a parameter which contains login underscore attempt. This is a parameter which contains a value one over here. And there is a different parameter, which is your LWV, which contains a hundred value. This is a proper to identify, but the most important thing is to understand what exactly the parameter value is over there. The web application part is basically totally based on different thing. Most of the pen tester, they try to read the core mechanism or they try to read the basic concept of the web application works over there. So we need to follow each and everything one by one that could be help us to identify. So say this one, as I was on the pen tester of port swagger, they given me a website.com with the backdoor.sh. The backdoor.sh is a file over there. See the OS command injection. The, it, it's an it's a, also a part of your injection. Where an attacker simply inserts some malicious script or adjusted data to trick the application to enumerate the backend side queries database. Or if you see over here, OS command injection, also known as shell commands. Shell command means your terminal that you always write over here. For example, let me show you the bash OS command. Like ping, I can see the packet, three packets should be sent. This is a normal OS command, which is run on my Linux terminal terminal, a bash terminal over there. OS command injection is an attack where an attacker simply executes some OS commands, just like your ping, your ls, and any command which is related to your Linux and enumerate the backend server database. So think about it. We only have the website. We only know the website, but in the backend, it's a, there is a server which is running in the Linux or Ubuntu or a, a Windows that depends over there. So you can see shell injections. It is a web security vulnerability that allows an attacker to execute arbitrary operating system commands. Arbitrary means malicious. On the server that is running on an application, yeah, obviously a server which is running over there, a server which is a physical device, and that server is hosting our website and web API, and we can typically work with it and typically fully compromise the application by its data. Let me show you how you're going to identify OS, in, OS command injection is also a critical vulnerability. You can see an attacker can leverage, leverage means level, uh, level up an OS command vulnerability to compromise the part of the hosting infrastructure. We don't care about what exactly in their network is. Through the website, we can simply see, is it a, win, is it a Windows, is it a Lin, is it Mac, and is it a, you can see a Linux or your Android or the intra network of the sensitive data, which you see over here. Upload, download, directory, server access control, edit user security levels, admin application access, access to the sensitive data and local network access also given over there. Exploiting trust relationship to pivot. The pivot word is basically to jump to the network by one by one. So see this one, how an attack can we work? Consider this one. This is a URL which is given the insecurewebsite.com with a stock status, which is a file type with the parameter and the value. And they have given a one parameter also, which is stored ID. Okay, uh, are you getting my points uh, or should I uh, more evaluate this one? Abhishek and Jadip sir. Partho. Yes. आपने ये Facebook का example दिया था ना वैसे ही मतलब एक बार समझा सकते हो तो better है. Okay. Facebook में जो मैंने आप लोगों को बताया था कि simple इसमें आपके para ये जो ये ये आपकी file types हैं. These are your file types और ये से directories one by one. And this login login attempt one is a parameter with the value. Most of the website security tester they works on the parameter part because this parameter is basically a part of your database query or your source code also. 
and a function of the application. Think about if there is a login forum, a login forum must be connected to the database because there will be a triple A authentication, authorization, and accounting that we always do. With the accounting part, we always follow the CIA triangle confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. So, this web application is totally a different thing right now. Okay. So for if you want to learn the basic concept, because the CH part is covering the vulnerabilities, you can simply go to the, uh, I will prefer this book. The web application hacker handbook, because this book will let you know the basic concept of how the mobile, uh, how the web application API works. चलो YouTube पे मैंने दो चार वीडियो देखे ना तो यही बुक के लिए सब बोल रहे हैं बग बाउंड्री के लिए सब बेस बुक या वो एवरीवन वाज सेइंग दिस बुक ना एवरी एवरीबॉडी सेइंग यस दिस इज अ बाइबल ऑफ द बग बाउंड्री यस समबडी सेइंग इट्स अ बाइबल ऑफ द बग बाउंड्री यप इफ यू लर्न इफ यू इफ यू हैव द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस एंटायर चैप्टर्स नो वन कैन बीट यू and uh, this book with uh, come with uh, example like practi practical uh, practical also yes it books comes with the practical also what is web spy train see this one it will be all written over there you have to simply uh, automate or or you can have to do manually this will this will this will book uh, help you a lot in your web application part yes uh, shall we continue yes 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 sir so this uh, parameter with the value which contains some uh, this listen this product id the product id is must be a column name from the database server product id is equal to 381 store id is equal to 219 so they have totally different uh, column name a column name product id with the store id think about this one this specific when you are doing a login forum when you are simply authenticated to an application this is also connected with the database query let me show you about this part Mm -hmm. So it was like this. See, uh, for example, they have given an example over here, which says consider an application that let a user log into the username and password. Yeah, we basically always do this one. Na? If a user submit the username. they have given viner and the password blue cheese they have simply given but what we only have the front end but in the back end we can see we have a proper sql statement that could be help us to understand how the website works which is your source code review or your code review part select star from user the user over here is the table name where the where condition the where clause is to basically find our it's a uh, combination so you can say username with the viner and the password from blue cheese it will be executed from the database to simply highlight it. and same thing is happening over here also this product id is also a part of your column name which is an entry from your database but how an attacker can simply extract or simply do some other stuffs For example, you can see they have given the Perl command. Let me show you one example of this one. <coughs> so this is a normal um, OS command injection. So if we can ex execute any 
Stock product checker. So this is an application which will check the data uh, query from the database server. So you can see one more thing: the application executes a shell command container using user supply products ID stores and return with the raw data. So to solve this lab, we have to execute who am I command to determine the name of the current user. So let's try with uh, the uh, the access the lab. Let's do. This one. Uh, this so, is paid paid lab or uh, free lab? This is free one. These all are free. Anyone can join. Okay. So over here we have. Simple a part is given. So what we're going to do? We're going to try to enumerate one by one all the possibilities. So, for example, we can see we have a home directory. This is a normal home directory. There is nothing changes. But I can see some items over here. Conservation, controlling. You can see these are the uh, products over here. So let's have a look. Uh, let's go and check this one. As per the lab, they said we have to check the stock market. So we can see that there is a London and the check stock. So we can say this unit contains 62 units on London. So we have Paris and Milan also. So think about it. You have to think a simple logic over here that this Milan and this query, which is over showing over here. It contains a database query, which is simply executing the query from the database. So what happened if I simply intercept the request with the verb suite? Intercepting means read about the request to sentence the body. All I can see, this is a normal post request. A post request, which can be filled with the, any of the text field, just like you when you do, do Google.com on the Google search, it contains the post method. Anything which with where the data is flowing from, any text field or any comment field or any of the parameter value which comes in post. But if the data is transferring from the URL section, which is your get method, sometimes you will see a get method over there. And the get methods are basically the data which is transferred from the URL section coming. Uniform resource locator. For example, I can see this product is going to stock is the uh, is the file type, and I can see the host which is our website, the user engine that I'm using for mediator. Accepting encryption standard. And coding refer where the URL we are going to go. I can see product ID is going to be one. The content type. The content type is basically your application profile. The origin 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 basically contains the where the uh, where the request has been uh, originated or created, and the length uh, content length content means over here the packet size. But over here, I can see product ID and stored ID are the parameter values. Otherwise, you can see you can click over here with the parameter. You can see there are two parameter values, one and two, and the proper header values. But the major part that we're gonna do in this proper verb suit, I will say, if you know the verb suit, everything will be easy for us to understand. For example, what we're gonna do over here. We're going to send this request to repeater. What is the major function of repeater? Repeater is basically used to modify the client request and see the behavior of the server. 
we have the request we have the request tab and the response tab the request tab which is a client request so we can see the behavior when we execute or we simply uh, pass the client to the server so the, if the client uh, if, the, if the request is successful we will get a response from the server 200 which means okay report but let us let us see over here in the proxy i'm going to send this one right click to the repeater and i'm i'm not uh, okay let's drop the packet i don't want to execute the packet the packet has been dropped the request was dropped by the user yep so all i can see over here on the repeater yeah it contains our parameter value so what exactly the os command over here so the os command injection will be simply execute some malicious commands from the server side see this one if i'm using a ping command if i'm using a ping command to simply execute the command but i simply say uh, i can write any malicious command just like the rmrf rf it will format my entire uh, drive path an attacker when the server is supplying some data from a legitimate user uh, an attacker can try to manipulate the specific command and can add some arbitrary command over here for example i could write who am i i can write uh, i have config so it's gonna run both of the queries or it's gonna run the malicious commands also see it's gonna run one by one of the commands first he run the ping command then he run the who am i command which is root then he run the if config command and i have uh, then i run the lsf and all command the list directory Let me show you one thing what will happen if an attacker can jump. So we have two parameters, protect ID parameter and store parameter. Let's see what can happen. So I'm not going to change anything. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add uh, and sign. Why I'm using an and sign? Because and sign contains two parameter values. We can uh, execute two uh, two parameter values in a single go. So if I write who am I, let's see what happened. Okay, there was nothing. Just I can see like uh, there's a 22 unit. Let's try with a semicolon. Now I'm using the semicolon because they were using the AND function over here also. AND function means an another query is joined, and this who am I was taken as a query. So let's try to again jump. So I can see uh, there's a, a home. Uh, it's revealing some sensitive information, just like home Peter stock report. So what exactly the stock report over here? Uh, stock report, which is uh, a normal file, which uh, which was like this, uh, the product ID. Yeah. So over here, this parameter was not running. So I'm going to try over here also. Let's try. Who am I? I can see the second parameter was running my query. The first one was having a simple query default error. See, so, all I can see there's a if I I have written who am I. So over there, in our simple parameter value, we have to check either is there any OS uh, command injection attack is there or not. So I can see who am I is executing. Let's write ls iPhone all list all the par parameters. Okay, so I can uh, there is a space over here. So let's do plus. In the post method, plus means space over here. Yep. You can see we are on the Peter's directory, and I can see there's a file like bash logout. Bash RC, Bash profile, bar, uh, jar, stock dot report dot SS file, which is also a file of the server. See, an attacker can do a lot of things over here. What I'm going to do, 
uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a cat etc password. Cat etc password contains the user names of the server. It contains all the usernames on the server side. I can see the Peter also. The user, Carlos, nobody. These are the system users. OS command ingestion is the major critical vulnerability which can be used to enumerate any database queries on the server side and which can be used in various techniques also. If you, if you look for the reports of the OS command ingestion, see the 200 request response code indicate that the request is successful from the server side. If there is an error, you will get 400 requests or something related to that. The port swagger contains the scratch level to advanced level. This was a normal scratch thing just to enumerate how this works. Sometimes if the semicolon is not working, you can try the double end function. But the double end function is also taking as a query. So we can do a pipe, a single pipe also. So we can try the double pipe but the double pipe will simply execute the first one. You can try whatever the condition that we can use over there the, for the condition or to merge the code. If you try to run this one just like this, it will not execute. It's simply the bypassing the queries parameter to execute our arbitrary shells. So in this scenario, what exactly the vulnerability is? The vulnerability is to enumerate or extract the information on the backend process or extract the entire database. So one by one, we can try to enumerate. What exactly, what are the other things we can do? See, this is a normal lab, which I'm going to tell you. We have other techniques. We, we can write, who am I? In Linux, name of the current user, who am I? Unim FNA, the operating system version, net IP config, net stat, network connection, what other application is running. You can see the windows also. The version VER for version IP config space iPhone all. There are lots of techniques that we can use it over here to extract the vulnerabilities one by one. Blind OS a command injection vulnerability. Most of the vulnerability basically based on your blind based. Blind SQL, blind SQL, blind OS command injection, there are lots of blind accesses also. Blind accesses means where we simply hold the response code for a specific period of time. It means the attacker simply put some time delay conditions or a condition that holds the packet for a time. Many intention of OS command injection are in, uh, injection of blind execution. Why? This means the application does not return the output or a command within the SQL response because it holds a specific period of time. We can hold it for 10 seconds or 5 seconds. If it holds for response code to come in 10, 15, or 20 seconds, it could be a vulnerable part. That means a client, an attacker can control the vulnerability. Blind vulnerabilities can be still be exploited, but different techniques are required. For example, see this one. I was using ping command. I was using ping command for 10 seconds. So it means it's sending a request code over there. The 
then we have a proper output of the server. How many times it's taken over here? Because over here we were sending some OS commands over there on the server. You have to think about the logics over here. See this one. Consider a website that lets user to submit feedback about the site. Now we have uh, data to be saved over there. The user enters their email address and feedback message. The server side of the application then generates an email email to site administrator containing a feedback. Yes, after the submission, it's gonna simply revert it to the administration. To do this, it's called the mail program and submit details. For example, like mail iPhone S this site iPhone oh this is normal part from Peter normal dot net feedback vulnerable website. It's really something like this one. The output from the mail command, if any, not written in the application response. So it's using the eco payload. The eco payload, the eco is basically used to, uh, uh, you can say, output or a highlight. For example, you can see if I write eco over here, eco, uh, Lucifer, it's highlighting the Lucifer part. So you can see also using the eco command to not to be effective. In this situation, we can use a variety of other techniques to detect or exploit vulnerability. For example, we're going to use the ping command. Detecting blind OS command injection by using the delay, the time delay. We're going to delay the response code for 10 seconds. If we can count the 10 second deletion, it's vulnerable. You can use an injected command that will trigger a time delay allowing you to confirm that the command was executed based on the time that an application take response. The ping command is an effective way to do this as it lets you specify the number of ICMP packet to send. Yes. ICMP eco packets, we can simply consider how many packets that we need to send. So that time the response will be delayed for that part. Okay, so we can use this command. Let's try this over here. We have a submit back. Yes. Now, I don't know which parameter is vulnerable. There is a name parameter, email parameter, submit parameter, message parameter. So we can do lots of other things. I'm going to write Lucifer, Lucifer.co.in. So this will be a normal submit part, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the packet. Send to repeater, drop the packet, that's it. So then to the, the repeater, there we can see there's a name parameter, email parameter, and the submit parameter also. So I am not aware about which parameter is vulnerable to which part. So the time delay parameter, the time delay parameter will let you simply hold the request part. Request part. You can see if I simply execute this one 200, the request is completed in a single click and response. But we have to hold the response code for a specific period of time. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some ping command. iPhone C, give me two minutes.
Yes, I was in a call. Sorry, I was in a call. Okay, uh, are you able to hear my voice now? Yes, I guess. Yes. Okay, so we're going to create our own ping command. And I'm going to send some 10 packets. And uh, I'm going to send this on to my his local host. But uh, there is a problem over here. Uh, let's see, is it using AND function or not? Uh, let's try AND. Ah, no, not AND. Let's do semicolon. Yep, it's, it's working fine. Okay, but there is a problem over here that this is considering, okay. This is the normal plain text, okay. So the data is transferred from a normal URL form, so we have to change the parameter value. So what we're going to do, we, ha we have to simply use the space like, like ping space, I can see space or space local host IP. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some plus over here. Plus that means space. See this one. Yeah. Now it's done. I'm going to copy this one also. Why I'm going to copy this one? Because I'm not sure that which parameter vulnerable is. So, semicolon. Yep. Okay, let's use semicolon. Okay. Let's try over here also in the, uh, the subject part. And let's try on the Lucy Brown. So, let's see which parameter will be vulnerable. Could not save. Okay. So, Let's try with the one by one, I guess. So, hmm. let's try over here with the name parameter first. So, we're getting 200 request code. So, uh, this one is not working over here. So, I'm going to change this one. So, cut. Let's paste it over here on the email part. Let's try over here. Is there a uh, this working or not? Oh, this is not also not working. Let's try with the subject part. Hmm. And now I can see it was a simply uh, delayed for a specific time. Let's try again. Okay, now it was also not delaying. Let's try it over here. Mm. Mm. So let's see what was the problem over here. Do I'm doing some mistakes? Ah. Okay. So this time I have to change the. Uh, sometimes we have to change this uh, pipe command over here. Uh, that was a problem. So let's use uh, over here again. Yes, now I can see uh, there was a one mistake which I did. I didn't have mentioned the semicolon over here also. So you can see it was simply hold the response code. Let's do 50. It's going to take a long period. So one, two, three, it's, it will be like this. So blank explanations means it's basically to check the behavior of the server. If you can hold the response code for a specific period of time, there could be a major vulnerability. OS command injection, an attacker can execute arbitrary OS commands on the server side. Simple. And these pin command is our OS command over there. Is it okay, Jen, sir? Okay, sir. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. 
yeah. we have waited for the out of like response this could not be save matlab like yeah the response was a little bit delay because of the 50 request we get you will not see the output anything but you can hold the request parameter there are a lot of things we can try this port swagger will help you out a lot of things blind explanation can be used to simply redirect also that's why according to the worst of time injection is considered over there let me show you one more uh, one more vulnerability of our stock time the broken authentication which is 82 if i all if you uh, if i talk about the authentication part means uh, it will validate the client request to the server side for example if you have a login form the login form will be cross verified by the server database a login form will be cross verified the client request with the server database which contains our credentials just like your username and passwords because over here i can see that the database server contains the proper validation part is it okay so we have to assume that the authentication the triple a the cia triangle for validation part let's see what exactly the broken authentication means over here broken authentication occurs when the application mismanages session related information such that the user identity get compromised how the user identity will get compromised think about it there's a logic behind this one when you are logging to an application you will assign three attempt if you if you mistake the three attempts the fourth attempt will block you for a specific period of time i think this is the general thing which has happened three attempt ke baad you will kick out for a specific period of time and some of the sensitive information can be compromised broken authentication is also a vulnerability when a attacker can simply perform some brute force attack a brute force attack is an attack where an attacker simply use some phrases and words to simply log into an unauthorized access because it contains some username and passwords the information can be form of session cookies passwords secret keys and etc and what exactly this scenario means over here the aim of here is to either get someone's sessions or a session which has ended by the user or to steal session related information see this one authentication so over here what we have an attacker can simply log into the application which contains a username and password field but what he did enter your email address to reset your password so the password reset connection will be malcrafted and it is sent to the victim and the victim will the host will redirect it to the email user.net part which is a vulnerable site see this one why we always secure ourselves for secure our passwords secure each and everything why because we are afraid if we get compromised lots of sensitive data we can be compromised you can see in this section we will look some of the most common authentication mechanism used by a website and discuss potential vulnerability in them highlight both internet vulnerabilities in different authentication mechanism authentication means login for simply standard 
well as you know, some of the typical vulnerabilities that are introduced by the improper platforms and authentication part. We will provide some basic guidance here with you. Authentication labs. There are lots of vulnerabilities. See, if I show you, we have username animations, we have username animations part. You can see they have given two after how we can bypass two factor authentication, two FA broken logic, two FA offline password tracking. See, these are the things that happen over there. And these are concepts in real life scenarios. The authentication part contains a lot of things. But for the basic understanding, I'm going to show you how does it works. Simple. There are three things in your mind should be know. What is exactly the authentication means? Authentication is a process of verifying the identity of given user to or client. Yes. In other word, it involves making sure that they really are whom they claim to be. Yes, I should be. Who exactly am I? Website are exposed to anyone who is connected to the internet by design. Robust authentication mechanism and integral aspect and effective web security. I think you you might uh, you might guys know these things. These three authentication factors which should be related to real life scenarios. Something you have, something you uh, something you know, something you have, something you are or do. Something you know means you have you know the username and password. See, such as password or the answer of the security questions. You may know that one. These are sometimes referred as knowledge factors. Yeah, we sim sometimes we simply put some uh, security questions over there. Am I right? I guess I am. Something you have means like your cell phones to enable OTP. It is a physical object like your phone, mobile phones or security token, which is assigned to the APIs. These are sometimes referred as position factors. Something you are, something you do is just like your biometric or pattern of behavior. And this is basically based on your inheritance factor. Is it clear, Abhishek and Jadip, sir? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Yeah, let's try what would be the possibilities if I simply use this one. OK, there's one more thing. Always remember about authentication and authorization. Differentiate. Authentication will be who exactly you are or whom you to be claimed. Or authorization involved what should we allow or to, to or to be do? Allow means authority that you have the permissions to be assigned in that list. Uh, suppose, simple, there's a question. Um, if I'm using an application, I, I, am, I am the admin right, I have the admin rights, but there's a local guest user also. Each and every user in the application has the authority to perform in their classes. So we can talk about the broken authentication, how the broken authentication works. Because broken authentication vulnerability flows are based on your brute force attacks or bypassing the OTPs and two factor authentications. So you can see how the authentication vulnerability arises because of the brute force attack. Broadly speaking, most vulnerabilities in authentication mechanism arise in two ways. The authentication mechanism are weak because they fail to adequate protect against brute force attack. What exactly the brute force attack over here? See. This website will help you a lot to understand. A brute force attack is an, when an attacker uses a system or a trial and error. Trial and error remains hidden trials in attempt to guess the valid user credentials. These attacks are typically automated using word list of username and password. This is the important part. Automating this process, especially using the dedicated tools, potentially enables an attacker to make vast numbers of login attempts. See, normal thing is given. So let's have a look. Let's do a simple attack part. 
Let's try with this one. So we can perform a simple brute force attack. Uh, and uh, we're gonna try to brute force usernames and brute force password also. And so if, uh, think about it, if we, if we are using a brute force attack, so what could be the usernames? Username like Partho, or it could be an email address also, just like your, this one. Or if you talk about the password brute forcing, so it will be a combinations a minimum number of characters, a mixture of lowercase and uppercase letters, and the list of special characters. Yes, we do that thing most of the time. Like this one. This one is given a proper way. Password is my password, but you can see they have changed the values over there. Let's try the username status code. Let's try this one. Username animation by different response code. We have to animate the usernames. Let's try this one. First thing we're gonna identify the username, then we're gonna identify the password. So this lab is vulnerable to username mechanism and password brute force attack. It has account with predictable username and password, which can be found in following word list. So it means we have two different word list. So let's try this one. So they have assigned us uh, uh, some of the usernames over here, like root, admin, test, guest, info, idem. See this one. So we're gonna do copy. We can copy a tab, this one. So I'm gonna copy, and I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna paste it in the text box, okay? So let's do this one. So save this one over there on the desktop. I can say next one. You can name this one the user dot txt. Yep. Now we have the password also. It means if the password date and the username can be leaked and you can be get in anywhere, or you can create your own password list if you have gathered as much of information about your target. So I'm gonna do a normal text file. This one. We're gonna try to broken authentication part. Okay, wait. wait. Let's copy this one. And I'm going to paste it over here. So the next step, I'm going to name this one pass again okay, over here. Pass.txt. So it's going to addition. Yeah, we have this one. <laughs> So over here, I can see the password.txt and the username, uh, user.txt contains the words. And there were 100 lines. Yep. Over here is also 100. So let's try this one. Let's try to extract. So we need to identify the user and user animation by different response codes. So we have to identify those things. Username animation is when an attacker is able to observe changes in the website behavior in order to identify the given valid username is valid. Yeah. Username animation typically occurs either on the lo login forum, for example, when you enter a valid username but an incorrect password or a registration forum when you enter a username is already taken. This is greatly reduce the time or effort required to brute force a login because the attacker is able to quickly generate a short list of valid usernames. Yep. Let's try over here. So let's do access.
So this is the normal blog which is given over here. So we can try on the login forum. Yes. Yeah, so the first thing I can see, which is login and the username and password. So let's try with my name. Yeah. And then the username. So can I write root over there? Then, 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 then. No root. Let's try admin, I guess. No, no, the username is so invalid. Uh, but over here, we need, what we need to do, we need to try to use our dictionary with the username password. I'm going to use the username dictionary. It contains all the users' names over here. Let's try this one. So over here, we're going to use a tool on the buff suit that would be our intruder. Intruder is a tool which is basically used to perform a brute force attack on the server side. Performing brute force attack with the help of attack types. Sniper, battering ram, pitchfork, cluster bomb. And these are basically used to perform a brute force in a specific parameter. But over here, we have to capture the packet first. For example, I'm gonna put one and two. Intercept on. The interception is over here to simply check the packet part. So we can see the CSRF which is given over here, the token. This is not important for us. We're going to use username and password. So let's do right click, send to intruder. Send to intruder, it will simply send the request to the intruder part, you can see over here. But uh, in, the, in the proxy, we're going to drop the packet. I don't want to intercept the packet. Why? Because through the, well, just think about it. If I have username 3 or 4 times, then it will block me at a It will block me at temporary time. Ke liye. But there are some applications that they don't block. Karti nahi hai. So in that time, an attacker can perform a proper brute force attack. So let's try over here. Okay, so when there's one more, uh, there's one problem over here. See why? So consider this one. See, mm, let me show you. Okay, so where is it? Yeah, there are four parameter values. One, two, three, and four. But our main parameter that we want to attack is on the username parameter. Yes, username parameter per attack on Amazon. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do, we're going to clear all the tags. See, I clear all the tags. Why? Because I want to simply attack on the specific parameter, which is username parameter. So highlight this one with the value one and tag add. We're going to perform a brute force attack on the parameter and the attack type that I'm going to use is your sniper attack. The sniper attack you basically used to perform a specific target over there. Single parameter attack in English, you have a sniper use with that. Battering RAM, multiple parameter pay. Pitchfork, where you have two other dictionaries. Parameter 1 key, parameter 2 key. A cluster bomb is used for single parameter, ke liye, single dictionary. Ke liye, but this does it. Every parameter ke values ko ek ka check one another. That is permutation and combination. And both parameters can be cluster bomb. Use ka sakte, but I will use a simple single sniper parameter. You can see I have selected the parameter 1. Let's go to the payload and I can see the payload option is to set a word list that you want to use. You can define one or more word sets. Number of payload set depend on the attack type and defined as a position. So payload set is one. Yeah, because there's only one payload to be attacked. 
and the payload type is simple payload but over here if you click there are lots of payload type that we can use runtime payload custom later character submission substitutions case modification recursive grep. you can see there are a lot of things is given username generator maximum payload per you can generate your own username but over here i'm going to use the simplest payload in simplest payload we can load our payload on okay so load desktop in dictionary we can see user.txt file which contains all the words over here which is 100 words so we can attack on the simple single parameter over here you don't have to simply uh, uh, do some other things just like a payload protection. See, the, these are not in, uh, in the option tag. You can simply post your scan part or simply faster your execution and start attack. Let's So all I can see, there are 200, all are 200 over here. We can see the request, which contains the username PI, and I can see the response code, username renovation. Invalid username. See, the first thing is invalid. All the statement are 200. See. All the statements are 200, but I can see there is one pattern which one one length of the packet which is 3186. And you can see all the packet which is 3184, 3184, 3184. Sometimes we have to maximize or still to understand the current one with the maximum length of the packet. The length of the packet contains a simple extra size or bytes which indicates that this is the exact incorrect password it means this is the correct username that we identified let's try over here oracle Let's do password, my name Partho. Now you can see the Oracle was the correct username. The Oracle was the correct one. But the password was incorrect. Same thing, what exactly we have to do? When you find the username, now look for the password also. But over here, where you have put the payload, just like your username, you have to clear this one. And over here, that you have to simply use Oracle. And now we're going to attack, we're going to perform a brute force attack on the password parameter. Same thing, but payload will be changed. Load, password.txt. Options. Now I have one more question to revise. When we are doing a login for a password, we have we have we have to fill the form of the credentials. Now what will happen when you fill the username and password, it will simply check to the database. Hmm? But it also indicate, it will indicate us a proper validation also. For example, which kind of validation it will see? 
is going to show us two T02 found. T02 indicate this is your HTTP status code. HTTP status code. It means the data which we filled over here is correct on the database server. That's why it shows T02. See this one. You will see 200, 200, 200, 400. Click over here. If you are not aware about this thing, just click over here. Simple, remove the 200 and 300, 200 or 400, because if you know about 200 success, redirection, request error, and server error. See this one. This is the password of your that. One, two, three, six, capital, make six or more is. See this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, login. Hello? Okay. 